Okay, Job chapter 31. Now we're going to know who Job is. This is the character of Job, and this is his self-righteous. He's a good man. Jesus met a, uh, a man who kept the law, being rich. Job is a good man by the works, and there's no law. If there are two perfect men outside of Jesus Christ in the Bible, you have Job and that rich man that met Jesus. He says, I, notice the pronoun is going to be, I, my, me, my. I, me, and my. I made a covenant with my eyes. I made an agreement with my eyes. Why then should I think upon my uh, maid? And the implication is, I, you know, I'm not going to look at no other woman. Jesus said, whosoever looked upon a woman the lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. Job has set forth, I, I'm not looking at her like that. That's a strong-willed man. For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance the Almighty from on high? And the, the, the part, uh, verse 2 is an implication, you know, what, God, what would God reward me if I look at another woman the way I shouldn't be looking? There's none. Is not destruction to the wicked? Yes, it is. And a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? And I don't understand what that strange punishment is. And there's some things in this chapter I, I don't know. I mean, there's punishment to people who work iniquity. They're jailed. They're, well, in the older days, there's jail. There, there's stocks. There was beatings. I don't know what a strange punishment would be. Does not he see my ways and count all my steps correctly? Yes, he does. He records them in a book as we see Job. If I have walked with vanity, I have walked with no nothing. Vanity is empty. There is no aim. It is purposeless. It is void. Or if my foot has hastened to deceit. If I had caused somebody to be deceived. Alright, here's the action. Let me be weighed in an even balance. That God may know my integrity. God knows integrity. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. He's like, okay, if I have met, if I have done, if I have gone and deceived somebody, if I have walked in emptiness, let God put me in a balance. Listen, God puts every man in a balance. When God puts me in a balance, he will see that Jesus Christ has taken my place. I'll be weighed by Jesus. He was made sin for us that knew no sin, that the righteousness of God be upon me in him. I have no righteousness. And men at the great white throne of judgment, the books are going to be open. They'll be judged by those works. It'd be weighed out. And then it comes down to what's the final conclusion? Is your name the land's book of life? If my step has turned out of the way, from the proper way, and my heart walked after my eyes, the Bible says one of the sins of man is the lust of the eyes. Eve saw it was good. David saw that woman watching herself. And if I, if any blood if any blot has cleaved to my hand, blot is sin. If I've done any wrong, anything that my hands have touched and stayed there and it should not have been touched, should not have been there. Sin. Alright, reaction. Then let me sow and another eat. Let my offspring be rooted out. Alright? Let me, let me plant fields. And if I sin against God, let other people go in my fields and eat them. And then take my family, my offspring, and then take them up. That's kind of harsh because remember, Job's children are dead. But it doesn't have to do with Job's sin. If my heart has deceived by a woman, again, Matthew 5, 28, you serve looking upon a woman that lusts after her in his heart has committed adultery already. 
deceived by a woman. There are some women out there that they attract the men's eyes and cause them to wander. For the purpose thereof. Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. Now verse 10 is weird. We're gonna, verse 10, I'll read it, then we'll read it slowly. Then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down before her. Alright, the act of adultery. Now they say that his wife let his wife go and grind meal and be humbled and work for other people. Sort of like Samson, when his eyes pulled pulled out and they had him grinding at the wheel. Okay. But it says, then let my wife grind unto another. What's unto another? Let her find another man to be faithful and take care of his needs in the house. One of the jobs of the women in the Old Testament was to grind meal for food. Jesus said a millstone. They had personal little millstones that were used for, for wheat and making flour. Then it says, and they say an act of humiliation, and let others bow down upon her. Others are bowing down to her. She's not bowing down. They're giving her respect. It's not that she's bowing down before anybody else. And this has been really the only plea that we've seen about a wife of Job. And Job's not particularly talking about his wife right now. He's saying, listen, if I have if I have gone after another woman, I have committed adultery, then let my wife go, maybe be taken care of by someone else, and let people, hey, you know, Mrs. Job, I'm sorry. Sorry, your husband was a deadbeat. For this is a heinous crime. Yea, it is iniquity to be punished by the judges. It's a criminal act. For it is a it is a fire that consumeth to destruction and would root out all my increase. It's this destruction. Fire. Fire burns up. Fire does not leave anything but ashes and destruction. That's what he likes his adultery too. Let, let it take care of everything I got. Now some people apply this application that Job lost everything, so he commit no, he didn't. Job is showing that, hey, listen, I'm righteous before God. And if I'm not, then let the penalties of whatever I have done, let it come forth and let it be upon me. And he's showing these three men that, hey, all this has happened to me, not because I'm wicked as they called them, not because I'm going to hell as they've said, I've done right. And, God, and Job's attitude toward God now is, why should you touch me? Am I not right? And he's trusting himself. If I did despise the cause of my man servant or my maid servant, now he's an employer. In reaction to an employee when they contend with me. All right, if I mistreat my employee, what then shall I do when God rises up, when he visits, visited? What shall I answer him? Now the implication of this one is, if I mistreat my employees, God's going to stand up and he's going to visit my employee and I'll be found at fault. And there are classifications to employers on how to treat the employees and there are employees on how they're supposed to treat the employers. And listen, if you're either judgment, judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, and you are an employer, and you have mispaid and misdealt with your employees, you're going to suffer a loss. It will go against you. And if you're an employee, and you've misdone to your employer, you're going to suffer a loss. Both will held accountable to what they haven't done. You know, employee that, employer doesn't pay his employees enough, hey, that's against God. An employee that takes time and, and fools around at, at work and doesn't do the full service that's against God it's a sin did not he God that made me in the womb make him 
All right, so Job believes in creation and did not one fashion us in the womb. Now, he's compared, listen, God made me and God made my employee. We're equal in the eyes of God as far as, hey, we're both created beings. I should not deceive, I should not mistrust, I should not do against that man. That man is born, that man has been created by God. If I have withheld the poor, okay, another case, from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to faint. Now remember, he's a judge, but we're not looking at Job the judge. We're looking at Job the man. What has Job done outside of his career? What has Job done outside of his family life? What is the character of Job? And Job's like, hey, I helped the poor. And I've helped the widow. I've taken care of them. Or have eaten my morsel myself alone. And the fatherless have not eaten thereof. He said, listen, if I sat down and had a meal, and there's a father of this first child out there, and he hasn't eaten. I ought to give him something. And we see that in, in Luke chapter 16. That rich man is dining on, on wellness, and that Lazarus is dining on the crumbs that fell off the table. Not the crumbs that the rich man gave Lazarus, but, you know, the stuff that's wiped up, put in the dustpan in the garbage. Lazarus out there dining on the garbage, dumpster diving, and... Job's like, hey, that's not how it should be. The implication would be that Job has invited people to his house to eat. That's what they did to Jesus. We, we read about Zacchaeus today. He stops and he goes, Zacchaeus, he's up in the tree. I'm going to live at your house tonight. And says, okay, come. Matthew's called to the surf. Matthew says, come into my house and we'll dine. And Jesus came. When Abraham met those three angels, the, the, the two angels and guys, said, come on. He calls his wife, he says, Sarah, get, make some bread, calls the servant, get the fatted calf, let's feed these guys and sit underneath the tree. Lot, when they came into the city, the two angels said, come with me, and Lot made the food and, and dressed the food for them. There wasn't really many needs of hotels and inns back in Abraham and Lot's time, but you were out in the street, hey, come into my house. There was a man in the book of Judges, he comes into the city and he's going to sleep in the street. This old man comes from work. He said, hey, no, you come in my house. I'll take care of you. Come. That was hospitality. You can't do that today because there's such wicked, vile people out there who take advantage of you. But he says, listen, the fathers, I'm feeding them. The widows, I'm helping them. Verse 18, for from my youth, he was brought up with me. The fatherless. He was brought with me as with a father, and I have guided her from my mother's womb. Talk about the widow. He's talking about, I grew up with these people. These people are my brethren. They're the residents of my city. I know who they are. That guy over there, he's poor. I know he's poor. He ain't faking. Those children over there, I know they don't have a father. I probably went to their funeral. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to help. It's a title of respect. It's a title of dignity. It's a, you know, brother helping brother before the law. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing or any poor without covering, someone out there, they don't have enough clothes for the winter. They're shivering. Maybe someone in the streets half naked. Whatever reason. If his loins have not blessed me, if he were not warm with the fleece of my sheep, does that mean out there, if no one else will give him a, a blanket or a covering, let it be my sheep, the wool of my sheep. Let me keep him so he can be warm. And his loins blessed, you know, his body, his, his nakedness is happy. Job has covered me. Job has taken care of me today. That's where it is. If I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless, when I saw my help in the gate, now there's being a judge. There, there's someone there, he doesn't have a father no more. 
and he needs help. And he's come to the gate. He's come to the judge. And if I don't help him, let my arm fall from my shoulder. Let my arm fall from my shoulder blade. And my arm be broken from the bone. And if that were to be the case, he can't do nothing no more. Let my limbs be completely useless to me. Because I didn't use it to help somebody. And be broken from the bone and pulled from the shoulder blade. That's sore. That hurt. For destruction from God was a terror to me. If I didn't do these things, God, I, I fear God. So everything that Job has done, he's done it because of the fear of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I didn't want God to do it to me. So I help others for God helping me. And by reason of his highness, God, I could not endure. So I'm relying totally on God. And he says, listen, I, I fear God. And Paul said, for the church age, you're to be a cheerful giver. You're not supposed to get grudges. And, and Job's get. hey, listen, let me take care of you tonight. Hey, let me keep you warm. You need some food, here you go. Because God's blessed me, everything I've done, and he has blessed Job. I'm going to pass the blessing on to you. I want to do it, and I fear that God will take it away from me if I don't. If I have made gold my hope, or if I have said to find gold, thou art my conscience. My confidence. I I come to God. I no. I've come to trust God money instead of my God. I'll even be so foolish to put in God with trust on my money. That's a joke. If money and gold has come to answer all Job's problems, he's sick. Now he uses gold. He's got to use gold to buy feed, to do things, take care of things. But it has not become his God. And also imagery or idolatry because they were covered with gold. If I rejoiced because my wealth was great and because my hand had gotten much, that rich man that Jesus said, oh, look how great, look how wonderful. Oh, man, I am just overfilled. I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to build greater barns. I'm going to say, so eat, drink, and be merry, and be at rest. That's not Job. Job said, hey, I got a lot. God bless me. How can I help others? How can I? Cheerful giving, Job. Job never relied on his riches. That rich man that Jesus, we read about his family today. You know, look how good I am. Look how proud I'm not like him. That's not Job. Job took look to others. But Job is also looking at, look how good I am. And again, Job can claim that responsibility as that rich wrong yielder. Look, I, I, I did not do this commandment. I did not do that commandment. I did not do this. I did this. I've done that for my youth. Oh, look how good I am. And Jesus never rebuked that man. Except he was rich. And he did not want to give up his wealth. Job done everything good before the law, no law. And he did not count on his money. And his money did not separate him from God as that rich wrong yielder, uh, ruler. Job is better than that rich young ruler. If Job would have been in that place of that rich young ruler, Job would say, okay, here's my money, Lord. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go serve God. That rich young ruler left because he wants to keep the wealth. If I beheld the sun when it shined, if I had sunrise service, if I worship Baal, the solar rings are on people's heads. And they were those solar rings called halos were around long before the Catholic Church. That Babylonian. And Job said, if I drew little halos around people's heads, if I worship the sun dead, if I gave honor to Baal, the sun god, or the moon walking in brightness, if I worship the woman, Mary, moon god, Asher is the moon god, if I gave all to Islam, which represents the moon god. Abraham came out of Ur of Chaldees, and Ur of Chaldees was given over to the moon god, the Crescent. One of, it's one of the Carolinas had, you know, the moon on their license plates. That's worshiping the moon. 
Let's get to the moon with spacecraft. Let, let's, you know, that's worshiping the moon. If, if Job opened up the newspaper that day and looked for his horoscope, that's what he talked about, the sun and moon and the stars. He didn't do that. When Jeremiah comes along, he said, listen, they have in every housetop idols and, and altars to the heavenlies and the moon. And the Ezekiel tells us that they're looking towards the sunrise service in the morning and call it abomination. In Daytona Beach and over, they call it service. No, it's an abomination. Job would not take part. And my heart has been secretly enticed. And all my mouth has kissed my hand, worshiping itself. I'm my own God. I'm an atheist and I am the product of all evolution. I'm the greatest, I'm the one. You know, sort of like with that stupid boxer there that triggered. You know, I'm the greatest, me the one, I'm the only. No, Job wasn't like that. My mouth kissed. You know the kisses are in the Bible? Judas and Absalom were kissing. Absalom had people betrayed by kissing people. Judas betrayed Jesus by kissing. This is also iniquity. And to be punished by the judge, worshiping, idolatry, and self-worship. For I should have denied the God that is above. If I put money, if I put wealth, if I put gold, if I put the sun, if I put the moon, if I put myself, I have denied God. And Job has really put himself kind of on that pedestal. I mean, he may not go for the gold of, of worshiping himself, but he's got the silver or the bronze. He's there. But Job, the person, has not become the ultimate deity. God is, but... If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, right? His enemy died. His enemy... Failed. His enemy got sickness. His enemy lost. Him. Job didn't say, "Ha ha, you deserve it." Great, thank you, God. Have you read the Book of Psalms? Go get him, Lord. Go take care of him. Wipe him out. Take him out. Hey, uh, uh. Job wasn't like that. As a matter of fact, what we read about the widow and the fatherless and all that. If his enemy were put to suffer, he would probably go and give him food and help him. Is that not the teaching of Jesus? How many years before Jesus showed up? Jesus said, feed your enemies, love your enemies, take care of your enemies. That's exactly what Job is doing. Job was more righteous than that rich man that came to Jesus and left because of his wealth. Job is right up there, you know. Job is not Jesus. But he's up there. Remember what God did? He said to Satan, see my servant Job, he shews evil, he retains his integrity, he loves me. I would not be worthy enough for God to speak to the devil about me because I'm not like Job. I'm a sinner. I have failed God too many times. Or lifted up myself where, when evil found him. You know, if I overpowered my enemy when evil came upon I took advantage of it. You know, when he was down and out, I bought his property for a dollar when it was worth a thousand. And that happened all through the Depression in this country. They took advantage of people by selling low and then charging high. That's all kinds of American business today. You buy low and you sell high. You know, people go in, they're down and out, they have a need, and they bring something that they love, it's precious in their family, and they get a few little tokens. And the person that bought it, he gets a lot of tokens. That's against the Bible. Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. Job has never said, go get him, Lord. Job has never said, get, get him. If the man of my tabernacle, his body, said not, Oh, that we had of his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street. Here we go. But I opened my doors to the traveler. 31 to 32 is, I've taken care of people. I helped them. They could not say I was stingy. 
I remember my grandpa living on the side of I-95, always kept a, a container of gasoline with gas in it. Because people come up to our house saying, you know, can we get some gas? Do you have a gas can? And he would have gas for them. They, you know, go take it to the car, fill it up. And a few times that can was stolen, but many times we would find that can in the driveway filled with fuel. And we're helping somebody who got stuck on the highway. That's what Job was. Job would have some kind of pantry, some kind of help. They live. What do you need? I got it here. So no one could say, you know, Job was stingy. Job didn't take care of me. But hasn't those three men that been with Job, have they not charged him falsely? One man said, you know, you didn't take care of widows and you, no, that's a lie. Sorry. If I covered my transgressions as Adam. Oh, so he knows about Adam. He knows about the fig leaf. He said, you know what he says about Adam? Adam, you sinned against God and you hid it. You know what Job's saying? I didn't do that. I have opened up my sins to God. Except for self-righteous. I even offer sacrifice for my children in case they curse God. I look at this in there. I'm better than Adam. So Job in his Archaic, ancient living of days of people didn't know nothing. He knew about Adam and he had no idea of the book of Genesis. Job is the first book written before Genesis. We are a long way off in writing of Genesis after Exodus 20. By hiding my integrity in my bosom. You know, I didn't hide my sins from God. Adam did. You know, Adam never repented of his sins as far as recorded in the Bible. Eve never repented of her sins as recorded in the Bible. Job said, hey, I repent. I repent. Did I, wait, did I fear a great multitude or did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silence or went not out of the door? I mean, he was open to God. Oh, that one would hear me. Who's listening to Job now? Everybody that reads the book of Job. Anybody who has read the book of Job has done with this verse. We're reading about Job and we're studying about Job right now. This is what you, oh, people hear me. We're hearing you, Job. We're listening to you, Job. Approximately... 3,000 years later, we're, we're listening to you, Joe. My desire is that the Almighty would answer me. Coming up pretty soon. He's going to get his answer. Lord willing, we'll get to that. That my adversary had written a book. Now, I'm going to tell you, Elihu is probably the writer of Job, and he's not the adversary. I don't know if Job's implying that the devil keeps the book, too. I don't know. There's only The adversary of Job in the book of Job is Satan or these three men. Maybe there's another book of Job out there, the Holy Spirit. No, I don't want that. Maybe, somebody, maybe somebody's sitting there taking notes of Job, one of these three men that are an adversary. If it's the case, the Holy Spirit said, no, that doesn't belong in the Bible. Write down what Elihu wrote. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. If somebody wrote about me, I, I put that. Well, here you are, Job, the book of Job. I would declare unto him the number of my steps. You know what Job saying? Somebody wrote a book about me? God, you see the book? You see how good I am? You see how well I did? You see what those guys treated me? You know how God answered Job? And death and hell gave up the, the dead that were in them. And it all stood before the great white throne. And the books were open. Next, state your name. Job. Oh, yeah, I got a great book about you, Job. It's longer than 42 chapters, but I got the book of Job. 
read the book of Job before all. And then, okay, the book of life, is Job's name in there? And I believe his name is in there. Okay, Job, come. Don't be cast off in the lake of fire. Your name's in the book. Job's a prophet. A print as a prince would I go near unto him. I walk up to God like I was royalty. Job. Oh, hush your mouth, boy. I walk up to God like, hey. You know who can do that? Christian. Are we not child are we not children of God? Are we not the sons of God? We walk up to God like we're princes. We're the sons of God. That's what a prince is. Job's not a son of God. He said, I'll walk like one. Now look what else he does. In his life. If my land cry against me. Or that the pharaohs, that's, the, that's the, the, the plowing of the field. Like Jesus back. And like the pharaohs there uh, to lose their life. So, oh wait a minute, where am I, I'm on the next, and the pharaohs likewise thereof complain, I went down to 39, you know Job just said, not only did I take care of the widows, not only did I take, take care of the, if my land complained against me, if I had planted something I wasn't supposed to plant in the ground, now I'm going to assume here, and you can put this. You can put this in the garbage. But I'm going to assume that Job followed this, the, the seven-year rest of the land. I, I don't know. In the land of Israel, in the law, they had to work six years of land and give it the seventh-year rest. But Job, and there are things that you cannot plant the same crop year after year after year after year because it takes the nutrients out of the soil. You got to plant one crop, and the next year you got to plant a crop that took out. The nutrient from that other crop. But Job says, listen, I am so good that my land would not cry against me. You know where else he got that from? He also got that from Abel. The blood cries out from the land. He's talking about Cain. When Cain brought his offering, God said, no, nope, not taking it. Sorry. Imagine if the ground complains. Is that true? I don't know. The Bible says trees are going to clap one day when Jesus comes. I believe that. I believe that trees are going to clap and rejoice like the Bible says as much as I believe the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Would it be, would it be interesting if the ground does speak to God, the great white stone judgment? Or the judgment seat of Christ? How well are we doing? If I have t if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, if I had people come and pick my crops and I didn't pay them, or I didn't pray them properly, or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life, if I have caused death, I'm guilty. Charge me. There are going to be tons of people who are going to cry to their employers. They, they, he kept me low income all my life. He kept me. I couldn't make a living because he underpaid me. Oh, but boy, did he get money. That's a whole nother topic. But because of what he did to his farm, he didn't fix the tools like he was supposed to fix them, and the tools caused damage in someone's life. It was his fault. What's the result? Let thistles, that's a weed, grow instead of wheat. And cockle, that's a that's a weed, instead of barley. Let me have weeds. That's what happened to Adam. Adam got weeds for his sin. The words of Job are ended. Now, as far as, we're going to hear from Job again, but I'm done with these guys. I'm done. I said what I had to say. I'm done. I, the last thing I'm going to say, I told you about my character. I am not wicked. I'm not going to hell. 
I did not do what you said I did. That's what. This is what I did. 